Hello again. Welcome to another edition of Arts and Ideas. I'm Sue Swinand. And my guest today is Lynn Simmons, who is a visual artist and uh, an educator as well. And I first saw Lynn's work over at the Worcester Art Museum uh, a few years back, and I was bowled over by it. I, it was the kind of work that stuck in my memory, and I thought, who is this person? <laughs> And then uh, a little while later, I saw the student show, and I noticed that the works that I thought were the most interesting and original and fresh and uh, innovative were students of yours. Wow. So I was very impressed and have been following her with great admiration ever <laughs> since. <laughs> so Lynn, I'm very happy to have the chance to learn more about your work and more about you. Thank you. Thanks thank you. for joining us. Yeah, thank you for asking me. Um, so are you still at the Worcester Art Museum? Um, I am not, actually. I left there about a year and a half ago, and um, I've thought about going back. Uh, but my other teaching has gotten uh, uh, increased. And so it's become more of a time issue. And what is your other teaching? Um, I'm teaching full time at Assumption. Oh, full time? Yeah, yes. Yeah, and did I yeah. see you were also at Clark? I do uh, teach one course at the in the what was the co-pace program there is now the School of Professional Studies. Want to show the audience a few of your right, right. start with this some I, images? I do. I kind of have these images set up in uh, chronological order. Come, you know, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the work I'm doing now, uh, working towards that. And so uh, I started uh, really working uh, as a sculptor when I was, when I gone back to school uh, in uh, a kind of a midlife uh, career change. I had uh, always been interested in fine art and, and making and uh, wanting to be engaged in the world. Um, and I applied to the Maine College of Art uh, in 1995. And, uh, so had you done art training prior to that no, before your... Okay, no, I'd ahead. been in the graphic design field, mm -hmm. um, and I was going to major in graphic design. Uh, and uh, by the time in my, so, in my sophomore year that I uh, went to declare, I knew I, I wanted to uh, major in sculpture and work 3D. Um, it was empowering as a uh, woman to uh, be able to work in, in the third dimension and, and eventually in the fourth dimension with video and sound. And um, uh, it has just changed my life forever. Uh, and and I, I try to instill that, uh, not instill it, it just kind of exudes from me with my students, I guess. That Art it, really adds something to your life. a life-changing. It, it uh, adds a lot uh, of event. wonderful uh, parts right. to your life. Yeah, yeah. So I started building my portfolio and started working uh, really in the mid-1990s. Um, uh, the uh, first piece that I'd like to show is a piece called Muscular, and it, it's, a, it's a really uh, good example of uh, the kind of 2D work that I was doing, uh, very uh, gestural, and um, I was working with materials from nature. I'm uh, much more comfortable being outdoors than indoors, so uh, a lot of my work uh, deals with nature and uh, natural, el natural materials. Um, I love that. That's I love that about your work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love the simplicity of this. Now you call it muscular. Muscular. Mm -hmm. Was it a muscle? It was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was based on an assignment uh, that was given by my draw one of my drawing teachers. One and of you my. You said favorite. it was made out of mud. And yes, it's made out of mud from the clam flats. I was living on the uh, up at Casco Bay. Uh, I went to the Maine College of Art, so I was living in Maine at the time. And uh, uh, we were given the assignment to draw 30-second uh, 30, 30 drawings, uh, uh, one-minute drawings for an hour. So uh, this was this was based on one of those. Makes you get this at certainly the, wasn't makes one you get minute. at the point. It does. Yes, it does. <laughs> and it loosens you up, and nothing it is sure precious does. after that. It sure does. Right. Um, so yes, it's, it's mud from the clam flats and charcoal and tempera paint and pastel. Again, one of the things I really love about Lynn's work is that her material is always somewhat surprising and <laughs> a little bit off the beaten path, you might say. Well, thank you. I, I, I take that as a compliment. I think you should. <laughs> um, I, you know, I've learned that uh, materials 
by themselves have a voice, and when you mix them and match them, I think we all, you know, even if you're cooking, right, you, you come up with and a it's different the conversation. It's the combinations yes. that yeah, so bring out new meaning. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah, we better go yeah. Right. Um, this uh, next uh, uh, piece that I'd like to talk about is uh, a, a, a piece made out of plaster. So it was a, a clay uh, casting, uh, and uh, it's called Triptych. Um, and it uh, was so you made a clay form and then put plaster in it. Yes, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this imagery of my work is uh, chronological. So this is the first uh, standing in the round uh, sculpture that I did. Um, I don't have it on my website. Um, I haven't shown it in a long, long time. I, I pulled it out of the archives, if you will, uh, for this interview, uh, for this session. It's called Mother Father, and it is uh, lattice uh, uh, and um, house beam uh, uh, and paper. And um, could so you elaborate on the title a little bit? Uh, sure, uh, absolutely. The uh, the form itself uh, is both. Um, referencing the female uh, body and also in the verticality of the piece, uh, the male body. Uh, and uh, I know a lot of people, myself included, who, you know, we have these relationships with our parents uh, and sometimes, you know, and we're certainly entities of our parents, uh, but uh, sometimes the, uh, the, the male and the female or the mother and the father uh, uh, personalities or um, identities, you know, get combined, mm -hmm. and so mother. It's father. a wonderful synthesis of the, you know, the, the, it's been talked about in many ways: the yes. positive, the negative, the void, the you know. Yes. The, but anyway, yeah. it's a yeah, it's so a beautiful thing. Yeah. And your first yeah. use of the slats? Yes, it was the first use of the of the lattice uh, pieces, the slats, which, um, uh, as we'll see very shortly, have influenced my work in a very large, significant way. Um, and that's just sunlight making it yes, the shadow just, across? Yes, it's just sunlight. Um, it's the, it's a, an image that maybe someone else wouldn't show because there's the shadow going right across the piece, but I absolutely I love, like the, that. I love this image. I kind of <laughs> like that because it envelops yeah. it in a real place. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. It, not only that, it makes the color so beautiful. Look at the reflected oh, the, light the, inside. Inside it looks like it's Ooh, glowing and it's yeah, just, it's just yeah, natural yeah, yeah. light. Um, I love that. It was in the sculpture studio at the Maine College of Art, so there's this uh, morning light that was coming yeah. through the window. Um, and it also, there's, um, once you start, or once I started thinking about and, and realizing the third dimension uh, as, a, as an expression, everything comes into play. So right now I can think of the black drop behind us and the cameras and the green screen. And, you know, I'm sitting in a space that's filled with things, but here we are. Because um, you're a space person. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I am. I know. I love that bar across it, and it, it defines the form. So gorgeous. Like, yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, working again, you know, with natural materials or materials from nature. You know, that's the way I prefer to say it. Um, I became fascinated with cement, even though that's not a natural element. It's a, it's a human-made element. Um, there are so many different things that I've done with cement that just in playing around in the studio. Um, I started to make these hand-formed cement spheres, and this particular piece is called Entropy, um, and the slats are just ripped up pine slats uh, or uh, uh, sticks and um, uh, from a white pine that had fallen in my uh, yard in Maine. And uh, the hand-formed cement spheres took forever to make. Um, I still have them, and I use them Why? all the time. Uh, because the cement is, is liquid, you know, it's, it's wet, and, and, and you have to, you have to until, just, right. And, and the other thing that I loved about making them is the process. So it was very meditative, but it was a displacement of that shape within my hands. Um, and I have a love of boating, and as you'll see soon as well, and boat forms and the way that boats uh, or form can uh, displace water. It was very much that kind of relationship for me, but it was you know, contained with. So you're my hands. taking the water out by doing this. And yep, taking the, the water out and set. making the making the form, and then I I rigged up uh, some you know a mechanism to you know hold them while they completely dry. So the idea of entropy is that this will 
yes, collapse. Just collapse mm -hmm. eventually yeah. because it's so sort of unstable. Yes, and, yeah. yes, okay. and it's uh, it's uh, using a grid, and so there's the contrast, you know, formally or compositionally between uh, the rectilinear uh, pine pieces and the grid that's formed, and then the, the circular, the curvy linear pieces. Lovely, um, and and then just the cement and that red orangey color from the pine. I just Again, the Love relationship it. of materials and mm -hmm. how they how they the speak dialogue, to each other. Yeah, the exactly. exactly the conversation that they have. Um, about the same time, so this is you know, around to the turn of the century. This century, <laughs> two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is a piece called Blackbirds Fly, and it is again uh, a house beam that I ripped on a bandsaw uh, in two thirds and then the uh, stainless steel rods are about seven feet high, so you get a sense of the, the um, dimensions of this piece. Uh, and then the top pieces are charred, um, a random uh, remnants, so if you will. So you see, will. they're not painted, they're charred. They are charred, so the, yes. So the color is natural and Yes, not yes, yes. Uh, it, are those rods, do they have like a tensile, uh, do they spring? When they move, a can little, they move? They do a little bit, yes. Yeah. So if, if this piece, and it's been installed in quite a number of shows, if you were to walk by it, uh, it they wouldn't move that much. But if several people walked by it, or yeah. if there was a, if it, it's also been in, installed outdoors, uh, it picks up the wind, it does move quite a bit. Yeah, I yeah. was reminded of the work of Harry Bertoia. Do you know his? I don't. Well, no. they're on wire, not wire, but steel rods, and they move and make sound. So uh, yeah, yes, he, he yes. was a person yeah. I knew back in Philly. Yeah. Oh, nice. uh, oh, I love that. That's gorgeous. <laughs> so when it's been installed outdoors, the um, stainless steel rods go right into the ground, and, and it does. I so wondered about that. So when they, the wind picks it up, it's it's perf perfectly stable. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. and it, it really does look like a flock of birds flying overhead, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Yeah. Even the way they're in a line, it, it it's lovely. And this is a detail. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's wood. Piece. Just wood pieces from the wood shop, uh, from mm -hmm. the bin, random uh, discarded pieces. And also the simplicity, you know, you don't need fabricators for this. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I to like keep that. it simple. I like that. <laughs> yeah, all my materials, I, I love, to, I love to, to use materials from the hardware store because it's accessible. Or the backyard, uh, or the uh, woods, yeah, or the beach, yeah, or the yeah, trash can. Or the yeah, some, <laughs> something that's accessible, something that's unexpected. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. The surprise element is always there in your yes. work. And there's an image of it uh, installed in the snow uh, up in Vermont um, when I uh, did my graduate work in the, um, went to the Vermont College of Fine Arts, and so this was the first week I was And then there. you got your undergraduate in Maine, in Maine, is that correct? Yes, at yeah. the Maine College of Art, yeah, in sculpture. Um, Again, this is about the same time, 2000, 2001, and I'm working with the lattice pieces. I'm and what is the title of this, this piece? Is, this is called uh, Tidal Project, T-I-D-A-L. Tidal. Tidal. Tidal Project, because again, where I was living was right on the coast of Casco Bay, and uh, I was interested in uh, land art, uh, becoming increasingly more interested in land art and environmental installations uh, in that, in that uh, genre and also um, working with um, the tides and again uh, boating in the way that uh, some way that I could uh, create a form that would displace water but I wasn't interested really in it completely displacing water and so I came up with this idea uh, very you know, simple that's probably been done throughout the ages by different civilizations uh, through the form of you know uh, or through the basket making um, is to weave the lattice pieces and attach the ends with twine and anchor them so that at high tide they would be completely submerged and at low tide I go out and I tighten up the twine. I love it. I love it. It was Plus so much fun. The soaking. <laughs> You're soaking the I am. parts it's that I'm need bending, to be bent. bending the wood. Right? Yeah. Right. And it does it and this is salt water so it really didn't take very long, maybe a week, week and a half for these pieces to go from being flat and I did a lot of them, small like six foot to very large 16 foot um, to coming up into these pod forms. I love the references too. They're, uh, you know, not only to boats and boat building, 
but also like uh, those insects that walk on water, and you know, there are all kinds oh, of. Oh, you mean the uh, water spiders? Water, yeah, I think uh, we call them, you water call them spiders water when walk. I was a little girl. But, but like there's, yeah. I, I can think of so oh, yeah. many things that uh, yeah. the way it, it sort of comes up out of the water, I love, beautiful. Mm. So this is a, uh, an image of them almost fully formed in salt water. Um, again, this is in front of my house where I was living. Uh, and uh, you can see the, the twine quite clearly there, also interlaced in the middle. Um, and I've continued to work with these forms up until this past January. Uh, they, they just keep speaking to me, speaking to me. This is uh. a version of it that I did at, um, here in Worcester at Elm Park in the first Art in the Park show. I remember that. And um, I, my surprise in installing it in the pond at Elm Park was that it was fresh water and it sank. It sank? <laughs> it did. No so kidding. I was, I, oh my gosh, what do, you know, what do I do now? <laughs> because it was just that, well, not only it being salt water where I was working with them before, but the, the vastness of that body of water, you know, which was the mm. ocean to, mm. you know, to contain. Uh, yeah. the, the forms. You had um, best in show for this piece, I did, as I yes, recall. yes, thank you, yes. It's yeah. a lovely piece. So, now, was that moved out into the water, or was it just at the edge like that? It originally was out in the middle of this. This is a section of Elm Park that's by the playground, and I moved it in towards the edge and, uh, and worked with it that way. So, over time, uh, it wasn't completely submerged, uh, but within, you know, two or three weeks, just from it being summer and humid and rain, uh, the lattice, uh, another Got discovery, <laughs> the lattice was able to be bent, so oh, even oh, without okay. it being submerged. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you know, it, um, it's also like drawing in space, mm -hmm. you know, with these lattices. It's three-dimensional line in space. It is. It's I, really it, lovely. I, so many people in during the ins this installation came up to me because it's such a public space and and gave me their opinions about it, which was Don't just you love I that? loved it. It was it, I really did. I uh, the, uh, my one of my favorites was that someone said it reminded them of whale bones, and like I a rib cage I had maybe like a rib cage exactly what they said, and I I was just amazed um, by the way that again how. Each of us interprets art a different way. Our perceptions, mm -hmm. will, you know, we bring mm -hmm. our own experience to these things, and um, and that was a wonderful connection for me. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this is uh, pieces from the original project, the title project, uh, when it was installed. All those pieces, all those forms were installed in in Casco Bay. Uh, it's a piece I call Remnant, and. Um, it's in, sh in a show here right now in, uh, in Worcester. Um, and it's been in a couple of other shows. Um, but I love, you know, maybe I'm going back to this idea of uh, male and female here. So for me, this is a, a provocative piece, if you think of it that way. It, to me, mm -hmm. it, the, this, the, what it evokes is entirely different from the pieces in the water. Mm -hmm. To me, this has a little sinister Mm -hmm. quality and because uh, it's coming out at you it's or? also like leather it's also yeah. you know it, it reminds me of equestrian tackle it reminds mm. me of torture things I don't know oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of different things yeah. come to mind but that's what I love about your work I could look at it tomorrow and think different things they're f they're full of possibilities oh, thank you. for that's uh, great. putting meaning that's great. into the shapes and lines that's great Thank and you. materials. Yeah, um, this is one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, I love that uh, in many ways. Um, uh, using uh, various uh, uh, so this nautical line that I have at the top, and then knotting it up as a uh, a noose in a way mm -hmm. too. So maybe that's adding to the sinister. We have five minutes. I just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> And again, using the, these forms again uh, in a show uh, here in Worcester in January. Um, this piece is called Three Sisters. Uh, so it's, they're filled with brick, hay, and sticks, referencing the three little pigs. The three little pigs. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, That's and cool. you know, the, I, there was a, a, a political reference to that at the time as well, which I'll talk more about in a little bit. So in, in terms of working in the environment and figuring out a way to record um, uh, the changes uh, for specifically the title pieces, uh, I was 
doing that with a camera. And someone said, why don't you use a video camera? And I said, oh, brilliant, I'll do that. And I have been using video, uh, working with video um, in, uh, in terms of recording my work, but also in more narrative ways uh, as uh, in terms of um, uh, art, uh, video, video art. And so this is this is images uh, a piece that was accepted into the Portland Museum of Art uh, Biennial 2007, called Night Cove Walk, and it's on my website. It's about um, a minute and a half long, and it's looped on my website. But uh, it is uh, kind of about surveillance uh, and about being out in this beautiful space in the middle of the night and. Um, I don't want to say too much more about it, but this is a still image from it. Uh, it's another uh, still from a different video project called Whose Time Is It? Uh, so the ocean is going, and you see this cart that's just looped and repeating. It turning. seems a lot of your work has to do with time. Is that a recurring uh, element in your work? I guess. I guess it is. Um, time mm -hmm. is an interesting subject. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the the time in this one, the eight a or eight o'clock, uh, doesn't change at all throughout the whole video. Hmm. Um, now this is a, a drawing, right? It is a drawing. So I continue to I I have a couple pieces of drawing uh, of two D work here because I, drawing is is important to keep uh, one seeing and and. Uh, uh, learning to process the world around us in a different way, for mm -hmm. me anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I call it direct engagement. Yes, it direct is. Direct encounter. It <laughs> is direct encounter. Uh, building things is a blast. I love it. I love working with my hands and building and all that getting physical. And drawing is a completely different process that I absolutely love. Um, I go through periods when I don't draw and then I draw um, because I'm doing other kinds of art. Um, but I love charcoal. I love the physicality of charcoal. So, did you drip water over the charcoal, no, or just, just brush it's it? Just, it's just my hand. You it's didn't all do mark anything making. wet no, on it's this. It's all mark making. Because it looks like you poured water on it. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, I thought you pure did. Charcoal, pure charcoal. Cool. Very and, cool. Um, this is another charcoal piece. I started working with um, uh, drywall. Uh, again, I like to fix things and. But, uh, so drywall is an interesting material to draw on. Uh, it's, it's I'm going to try it. Might know it as sheetrock. Um, uh, so this is a piece called "Everything I Always Wanted," working with different kind of imagery in the terms of uh, uh, photos from my iPhone. Um, this is a piece called "You Are Here." Um, Again, the drywall, you can see you know, the yeah. material of the drywall. It takes it out of the simple drawing when it's, that's actually on the wall, isn't it? The image? Yes. So yep. the, the paper is actually mounted on the wall. Well, it's on a piece of drywall that's okay. mounted, that's gotcha. hanging. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So it's, um, I'm going oh, to. Oh, let's look at this one. Skip up a little bit here. <laughs> So this is a, a, a piece that was in a show at the Worcester Art Museum uh, called, um, it's just called Archive Media Cube, uh, and it is uh, I love the title, Archive, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was doing, it's kind of a long story, but that's the name of this piece, and it's Object 1539 or something like that. But it's, it, is, it, is news, it is newspaper, and it's, it's news media imagery that's in the form of a cube. Again, going back to the square and the importance of a cube, and, um, and the randomness of the, and then the overlay of, yes, of language yeah. and, and so and forth. You know, newspaper has, uh, in the ink, there's, it, it, it is really easy to, to make forms out of it because it's got um, this kind of, um, uh, it becomes uh, like an adhesive. Mm -hmm. And this whole cube is still exists just fine. Um, it's all held together with that, with the ink or the residue, because I, I mm. wet it. So and there's then no wiring or anything? Nope, and, oh, and no um, uh, wood glue. Hmm. So Let's show one, well, what, just a couple of your objects, and then we got to mm -hmm. close. Keep going. I'm sorry. Oh, I wanted to. <laughs> um, OK, go ahead. So this is a part of this still from a, a video project that I did called Untitled. And the video uh, is a deconstruction of two main uh, texts. Um, one is uh, Karl Marx's work, and one is the New Testament. 
uh, and it, and also it's census uh, paper uh, uh, that's been washed and then hung up to dry at the end. I love the idea of, of washing the text mm. and then hanging it out, and, and then of course it becomes a sculpture. Mm. Well, I'm afraid we're out of time, <laughs> then. I, I knew this was going to oh, be sorry. more. I, I wish we had an hour because yep. I would love to go into depth on more of these pieces. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, I, I really have enjoyed it. Thank and, you, me too. Uh, where are you headed with this work? Well, I, I, I just want to end by saying there's a couple pieces at the, uh, that I didn't show that are on my website uh, that are uh, much more about um, art activism uh, and about, you know, and thinking about what my role is as an artist uh, right now uh, in our country and in the world, uh, the importance of all of us being engaged as best we can in our own way to have a voice, and uh, so I become very involved in uh, wanting to do um, social art and, and being an activist in that process. Um, I'm also uh, interested in bringing in uh, uh, collaborative work, so working with other people. I've been working with an art group here in Worcester, and also now uh, collaborating with uh, a friend, uh, Beta Asbridge, in, in uh, coming up with a new entity. And, and that is challenging as, as a kind of an established artist to like put everything aside and say, okay, I'm going to share this, <laughs> you know. I'm sure. Uh, and it's a really wonderful experience. I'm but, sure. But we just all need to be, uh, have a voice and be engaged. And so but thank you very gonna much. We're going to have to leave it at that, I'm afraid. <laughs> but uh, so have a voice and be engaged. And uh, thanks for joining us today. And thank you, Lynn si oh, thank you. Uh, Simmons. Um, Hope we see you again next time for another edition of Arts and Ideas.